Hello everyone, Mayor Zane here with something a little bit different. I've been trying a variety of new videos out recently, so here is something that you probably didn't expect of me. Azuma's Revenge modding tutorial. So, anyways, this is what your main Zuma's Revenge file probably looks like. Um, now, I do want to make a disclaimer immediately out of the gate. Whatever you do, do not do this on the Steam release of this game. If you, if you do what I'm about to do, you will break your copy of the Steam release of Zuma's Revenge. You want to know why I know? Because I did it. I broke my copy. <laughs> so here we have the origin release of Zuma's Revenge. It, doing this works on the origin release of Zuma's Revenge, but yeah. So I'm about to show you what, what you gotta do in order to be able to mod Zuma's Revenge. So the big problem is... What you have here is the main.pa key file, or pack file. Now, most openers, file openers, don't really work well with this. Like, if you use 7-zip, or if you use WinRAR. A lot of times, they don't seem to like the file. I have heard some suggestions to rename it, but even after I did it, it didn't work well. I did find one software that does work pretty well. It's called a Game Extractor. I will link the software into the I'll link the software in the description so that you you yourself can use it. But um, in the meantime, I'm so now that game extractor is open. I did pay for the full version, but you could still do this with the free version, so not a big deal. So what you gotta do is gotta click on new new archive, and then after that, you have to. Um, you have to make sure that you get to your Zuma's Revenge file. So in order to do that, you have to you have to make sure that you go into the program files. Um, since we're doing the Origin version, it's in Origin Games. I made a copy of my regular Zuma's Revenge for the purpose of showing you guys. So Zuma's Revenge 2, Zuma's Revenge, and then after that, you click on main.pa key. Now doing so will show a huge variety of different files. These are all the game's different assets. So what you gotta do now is you got to um, click on the archive here, and then after that you have to um, um, you have to extract all. So in order for you to do that, you have to um, let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Extract. There we go. Extract all. After that, it will the, a window will pop up here asking you where you want to extract it, and go ahead and click on on this one, which will extract all files into the computer. After that, it'll take a little bit of time, making sure that all the files will get into your computer, and then after that, you can start actually getting mod to the game. All all files export successfully. Great. So now we can go ahead and exit out game extractor, and now there there are some new files here. So, with that being said, something weird happens as soon as you do this. The game will no longer look for the files in the main.pack, which is why it's very important that you go ahead and extract everything, because, well, the game now treats it like it doesn't exist. I don't know why it does that, but it just does, so let's just roll with it for right now, because it'll make things easier for it. So, next, what you want to do, you know, well, depending on what you want to do, it will depend on where, where you want to go. There are two important files here in the levels folder. Levels.xml and levels underscore hard xml. As you can imagine, in levels is what you would edit for like the general levels. And levels hard.xml is what you wouldn't use for um, the hard levels, the heroic frog mode that's in the game. So you can just simply open this up with notepad if you want to start editing things. In Notepad, and you actually have some messages from the developers here, basically explaining the Berserk mode that is used for the bosses in the game, as well as special different movement commands that you can use, use in the game. It is very nice that the developers actually left all this here, because there is actually quite a bit of insight into some unused features for the game as well, along with, well, explaining what everything here does. So, there's a lot to play around with, I personally have played around with quite a lot, 
but I will draw attention to a few of the unused things like the color vampire sayings. This is never used in the game. Um, and then there's also like um, the messages from the bosses as you complete the different stages, um, um, zones, and all that. So these are where all these sort of parameters are stated. Game tips. This is um, this is a challenge mode settings for difficulty. Then after that, some other additional settings dealing with um, the defaults throughout the game. And then after that, you have a few basic settings for the stages. Now, the main thing that you can edit in the levels.xml file are the boss-related settings. I will make a video later where I um, show off a, a nightmare difficulty version of the first boss that I created, just, just for fun. But um, here you can edit whatever you want with each of the bosses. You can edit their text here. There's um, unused tutorial text here that the first boss doesn't use. Um, there's unused berserk mode for the first boss. Then, and here is all his related settings, including movement speed, shake, minimum fire, max fire, stun time, bullet speed, minimum max, um, camp compact. I'll get to that one in a different video where I talk about unused features. Um, and hover on hit, basically if he hit, gets hit, he'll, he'll um, start moving again. Frog stun, that's actually in there by a mistake. Um, there's nothing defined for frog stun, so stun is actually the main thing that defines um, the art to use, um, where the hearts should be placed. So you'll find that with, with most of the bosses here, along with um, a couple of other things for their saints, like boss 2 uses, uses a wall. And boss boss three uses um a special power up which, which is also mentioned here. So you can customize these bosses to your heart's content. And it can be a lot of fun creating more difficult combinations or more interesting combinations. You know different move movement types and all that. There's a lot you can do here, and and I I have been doing doing a lot of tests with the first boss in particular because well he's the easiest. So yeah. Anyways, the that's it's basically the same case for the hard XML. I'll file. You can also edit things here. Now you probably no noticed all, all these all these folders here with um, boss one, two, three, along with all the all the different um, level names and sections. Inside of these are dat files. Well, the, the first boss in particular has a bunch of them. A lot of these are simply test test dat files where they basically have. Um, test curves that they set up that they never need. The only ones that they actually use are boss one dot that and boss one underscore hard dot that. Um, to be completely honest, I do not know much about um, how they set up the curves in this game. But I do know one thing that you can at least edit. Um, if you go on to, um, oh, I'll show, show it here. Um, if you have a particular um, hexadecimal editor, that is where how these DAP files were made. They are made with hexadecimals, and if you just go go into one of these files with um, Notepad here, you can see that it's kind of gibberish, but it's gibberish with a pattern. Like you have curve up here, and then after that you have a bunch of D's, E's, O and D's here, and X, X, D for some reason. All this is how the game sets up the curve. Now, I don't really know how to translate this. Like I said, I I don't really know too much about how to edit curves yet, but I do know how to edit the number of ball colors that you get. Um, if you use um, if you use a hexadecimal editor, um, I'll see if I do have one on my shorthand here. Okay, no, I'll just go on to an online one. So. Google online hex editor. Okay. Because I believe this is what mine used to edit things. So what you didn't go to is open file. So we go go back to Zuma's Re Revenge. Um, we're, we're going to two because I don't want to mess around with my main one. And go, go into levels. Uh, let's just do boss one for right now. So here, things things make a little bit more sense as you now have numbers and things that were previous spaces are now defined. If you want to edit the number of balls, 
this is your number right here. Um, I compared various other files, and this is the number that you need if you want to edit the number of color of balls. You can even make it something crazy like 20. The, the game might not handle it well, but you can do it if you really want to. So any numbers 2, two through 6 are pretty much safe for this value. But, um, so, I have seen some online editors for the Zuma Deluxe version, so I, I wouldn't be too surprised if something in the near future happens where somebody does figure out, you know, how, how this is all defined for Zuma's Revenge, because it does seem very similar how they set things up. Alright, so now we can close out of this, now that I've shown that off. And now it's time for me to show another thing, too. Images. Most of the game is made, made up of various different images, and the problem is, at first, you'll notice that a lot of these are JP2 files and GIF files. Now, these aren't GIFs as in the sense of GIFs. These are all white and black. It took me a while to figure out, you know, what is what, what up with all these GIF files? Why, why, what is up with all these JP2 files? Uh, JP2 is their main format for different, different images in the game. Now, at first, I was a little bit concerned, because I was like, JP2 is a pretty irregular format, definitely not something that you would normally see. Fortunately for us, the game has no problem taking JPEGs and PNG files, so if you were to want to make, I don't know, something like Zuma's Revenge repainted, you could absolutely do that. You just need to make sure that you name the files properly, and you're pretty much good to go. So you have uh, you have a lot of different image files. All the characters in the game name are split up into various different images. Uh, going back to boss one, my uh, my go-to example, um, you have various GIF GIF files outlining um, the different pieces. But you'll notice some files like this one. Um, let's take a look at swipe.jp2. In swipe.jp2, you'll see that there are, in fact, three images here. This is because this is like an animation cycle, basically telling the game how to go through the animation of him, in this case, uh, throwing one of his skulls. So, with that being said, if you want to edit the graphics of the game, this is how you do it. Like I said, PNGs, JPEGs work absolutely using this. You do not need to use JP2 and GIF files like they're using. Because as far as I know, the, the JP2 is the actual image and the GIF file is the mask. Basically telling the game what to use. I tried myself to create my, some of my own files in this way, but it just didn't go too well, so I highly recommend that you just use PNGs and JPEGs and, and you'll be good. So anyways, um, with that being said, I do have 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 a couple of other things to show before before we end off here. And um, one of the other things that is definitely worth showing are stuff in the actual um, .exe file. Um, I actually have already extracted on my computer, so we can just we can just go go over to there. So in the .exe file, you have a bunch of these little, little fi files here, including things like data, you'd have a couple of XML files, um, but the one file where things actually do make a little bit of sense are the R data file. I almost said that like I was sudden. R data file. <laughs> Anyways, so we can go using, um, just simply use, use notepad. Where, where's the open? Okay, there we go. Open with, um, search windows. Notepad. There we go. You can simply open it with Notepad, and some of it actually does end up making sense. Um, some of this, I, I'm sure, is curved data, because I was I was wondering a little bit myself about some um, certain things things I didn't find the boss signs. Like for the first boss, there's like there's like a tutorial section for the very first time you fight him, and I couldn't find it there, so I was kind of shaking my head. A lot of the text in the game is also found here in the exe file. Now, this is interesting because I, I do actually know of a couple of uh, like unused things that are even found here, or at least not commonly seen things. Um, down here are all the different parameters that can be used for the boss section. So you'll you'll find at least a couple of things here that are, aren't in use in-game. I, I have indeed tested a few of these, and some of them crash the game, some of them don't. 
I'll make a video later once again showcasing some of the different stuff that is unused in the game, or at least not really used in, in, a, in a way, so. That, that will indeed come here soon, but I, I do want to um, also draw draw attention to um, some, some something funny that, that I found, too. Um, let's see here. Where where was it? I, I might have to, I might have to um I might have to find it. Um, edit find. Upgrade your video card. Dang it! <laughs> Some of the text is for. Yeah, upgrade your drivers. Where was it? Um, whatever the case, I did find text in here that said Zakamu, who's the final boss of the game, suggests so you upgrade your um, video card. But you can find some of the text that is not usually found in the XML file oh, right here. Um, there's even some interesting text with the first boss that I'll show off later. You'll find some interesting text that you usually don't see with the first boss. First boss here. Whoa, no, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Puny frog, your weakness is of legends. What foolishness to think you can hurt me? Assess your mental. Shoot me if you dare. Now, I'm pretty sure almost none of you who have actually played the game have actually seen that text, and I'll actually show it show it to you later in my second video here. But overall, this was just a basic overview of the many different um, things dealing with the Zuma's revenge files so this is an overall just basic tutorial for you guys if you were ever curious about modding the game or if you just want to see well how, how the game game works i'll post another video up later of me actually testing around with some of the unused content in the game but um with that being said thank you all so much for watching and i hope you have a great day